We move on to the next oration, that's Dr. M. E. Debeki Memorial Oration. This year, this oration has been conferred on Colonel O. P. Yadav. He is the Chief Executive Officer and Chief Cardiac Surgeon at the National Heart Institute in New Delhi. For the next 12 minutes, Colonel Yadav would be deliberating on cardiac surgery, a dying star or a supernova. Our chairpersons of this session are Drs. G. K. Mani, Rajneesh Malhotra, Neeraj Bhalla, uh, Yugal Mishra, B. B. Channa, S. Devi Dubedi, and Sanjeev Sharma and Preeti Chhama. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's really a great pleasure to introduce a person like O.P. Yadav. He is a very powerful orator and a powerful surgeon also. Because I had seen a lot of patients the way he operates and the way he got his own data. And the subject he's going to cover is cardiac surgery. You know, these words are not mine, these are his words. A dying star or a supernova. See the brain wave. What, he, what it works. Let's see what he has to say. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Dr. O.P. Yadav for a most prestigious operation on the name of Dr. M.E.D. Debeki Memorial Oration. He was a very powerful surgeon in the world. I present to you O.P. Yadav. Thank you, sir. Suitably humbled and honored. Lately, some interventional cardiologists will make you believe that cardiac surgery is a dying art. And they feel that the cardiac surgeons are an endangered species and they seem to have drawn the last nail in the coffin of a cardiac surgeon. Now, I'm no clairvoyant and I don't have a crystal ball to gaze as to what the future will be. And as they say, que sera, sera, that famous song, I'm not bothered about the future, but I certainly know that prophesying is not only hazardous, but, ladies and gentlemen, even perilous. And the history bears destiny. When the first light bulb was discovered by Edison, Look what the British Parliament Committee had to say. To quote, good enough for our transatlantic friends, but unworthy of the attention of practical or scientific men, unquote. That was for the light bulb. And when the television came into being, one of the biggest names in the Hollywood, a movie producer from the 20th century, Fox said, won't last because people will soon get tired of staring at a plywood box every night, unquote. And today we know how far removed from truth were they. So similarly, what's going to happen? I don't know. But as they say, the proof of the pudding is in eating. So let me show you the cake. Those who talk of the downfall of cardiac surgery, if you look at the Bradley data of Washington State, Actually, the PCI is coming down by about 7% elective PCI and by a whopping 43% elective PCI ever since the PCI appropriateness criteria were introduced. And why this kind of a situation and why this debate or that kind of a thing? It's because the cardiologists, because of certain recent advances, mainly the stent technology and the percutaneous valve seem to believe that anything surgeon can do, we can do better. Well, they should be well advised, not quite everything. They are using half-paid technology which is just beginning to take off. So to make this kind of overreaching statements is not fair and I'm going to take you through just one case in point and that is the latest in the stent technology, the so-called the bioresorbable stents, which I call them Toyota Corollas. In fact, they are this old wine or whatever you want to call it, old wine in a new bottle of that kind of thing. We still don't have answers to the problems of radial strength, the thick struts, their deliverability, their costs, they are technically demanding. In fact, it has been said that they are a device looking for a niche. And then in follow-up OCT studies, you find problems of evagination, 
malapposition, struct fracture, aneurysm formation, all of them are brushed under the carpet. What about the problem of stent thrombosis? And then comes the comorbidities. Do these technologies work well with diabetes? N number of studies have shown that. And even in non-diabetes, just a recent publication two months back, an analysis of the syntax and the best trial, you look at five-year mortality, MI, repeat vascularization, PCI, far inferior to surgery, and the stick they used to use to beat the surgeons with the stroke. Look at them, exactly the same between CABG and PCI. So first, the equivalents have to be demonstrated before you knock us out. And that's what, who else? A cardiologist, the deputy editor of New England Journal of Medicine, John Yako says, equivalency still has not been achieved between the two techniques. And as you follow patients longer and longer, the benefits of surgery get better and better. So on what basis are we driving that nail into the coffin? And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, surgery also is marching ahead. Please don't think CABG is just the conventional CABG of 1967 of Favalaro. Today we are looking at minimally invasive and endoscopic approaches. I know minimally invasive surgery has been lagging behind in cardiac surgery because of the problems of, you know, we got the laparoscopic cholecystectomy and abdominal surgery is about 40 years back because high standards and precision are required with, 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 you know, problem of the moving heart. We didn't have a still target. So technology had to advance, but now that we have it, we find minimally invasive surgery is applied to coronaries, to valves, to congenital, to heart failure, to arrhythmias, with all its attended advantages. Today, we are competing on all fronts, whether it be pain, it be wound infection, it be cosmesis, be early return to work with percutaneous interventions. We are talking of daycare surgeries. We are talking of awake surgeries, robotic surgeries done with 24-hour admission bypass surgery have been reported. We are now talking of telerobotics and the advances. We have a tactile feedback in robotics now, just the feel of a cardiac surgeon operating live. We have robotic wrists with all the seven degrees of movement and specific fields of specific developments. For example, in coronary, we are now having stapling and clipping devices. Crack the stapler goes and then astomosis is made. That's it, 10 seconds. We have coupling devices. You put one magnetic couple into the conduit, one into the coronary, and just like the train bogies, they just snap together and astomosis is made. We are talking of laser welting and glues. So these are technologies which have come up. The conduits are being harvested endoscopically. Similarly, in valvular heart disease, tissue engineered valves have now become available, which are non, which are non, non thrombogenic. They do not undergo any calcification. They have growth potential. What you do, you take cells from the human body, the person you want to give the well, valve, you take his own cells, culture them, seed them onto a biodegradable scaffold, intubate in outside in vitro for about four to six weeks, re-implant, over a period of time, the scaffold will get dissolved and the rest of the valve will function virtually as your own native valve. These are disruptive technologies which will bring cardiac surgery banned into reckoning and that's how the reactor uh, uh, valves look like as far as the tissue engineered valves are contained. We are talking of growing heart valves. We have a problem, we put a mechanical valve in a two-year-old child and every six months, every six years he outgrows that. But we have no valves available, animal experiments are going on where the valve goes with the child. We are talking of sutureless valves today. Whenever you talk of TAVR, please talk of TAVR with the sutureless valves. No suturing required. Aortic cross clamp time, 10 minutes with a three centimeter incision. Then you compare and talk of it. Don't talk of a sternotomy pump surgery with, when you're talking of TAVR. Endoscopic sutureless valve, excellent results have been reported. Similarly in heart failure, transplant has been the gold standard and we don't still have any percutaneous transplant available. 
And for those who are not suitable for transplant, we have a huge plethora of, of, of spectrum of surgeries available as a non-transplant options. They can have short-term, mid-term, long-term left ventricular assist devices, magnetically levitated LVADs have shown brilliant results over the last one year. Total artificial heart is very much a reality with survival going, I think, somewhere close to 700 days. And to address the sphericity which occurs in a heart failure, all kinds of wraps can be made around the heart. Now this complete spectrum is not available. Myo splints, we drive across the ventricle splints and it is based on this premise that if two people are holding a sail and if wind is blowing, they will find it will be very difficult to hold the sail down. But if they were to drive a post across the middle and the forces are divided into two, the two people can hold it very easily. So what is done in a failing ventricle, you drive three splints and by the side of it, you can adjust the tension and the ventricular function improves. Now these are technologies which are coming up and you're going to see them in the near future. We are talking of especially uh, the, the skeletal muscle being changed into a contracting ventricle and if you wrap the skeletal muscle around the aorta and you attach it to a pacemaker which synchronizes its beat with the beat of the heart and you find you have an additional heart support available. Today, even bioengineered human myocardium, which is force generating myocardial tissue, metabolically, functionally, electrically, conducting tissue, is being developed and has been shown in animal studies to be effective. Congenital surgery, you have only left to right shunts where cardiologists can help. What about the rest of the field of the entire vast number of congenital heart disorders where there is absolutely no choice but to go for surgery? And even if you look at left to heart, right shunts, classical case of ASD, 25% are sinus venosus and ASD primum, which are not suitable for percutaneous intervention. 30, 35% have other contraindications. Fetal cardiac surgery. You can do a hypoplastic left heart and let the heart develop with two ventricular physiology. Similarly, arrhythmia surgery, we have, you know, uh, minimally invasive endoscopic arrhythmia surgery can be performed. And we have developments, parallel developments in imaging, in myocardial protection, in intensive care, computing, modeling can be done before surgery to produce excellent results. And while we're talking of getting extinct, we should be talking now of the two joining hinds and doing things together, what we call hybrid revascularization. So ladies and gentlemen, to come to the end, it's also important that science and society must address each other and we must also take and look at the cost factor. India is changing, I agree, <laughs> but we are also a vast humanity of poor people, a country of contrast and contradictions. So what we need to do is marry the two technologies and ladies and gentlemen, question I ask, are we not all looking down the barrel? Yes, the interventional cardiologists and cardiac surgeons are here today by default, not by design, because there is no better treatment available for these disease processes. We are existing. We both are doomed. We both shall go down yeah. in the near future. Trust me. And when the surgeon goes down, he will not be alone he would have the interventional cardiologist as his comrade, albeit without arms. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Obi, for your brilliant presentation. Uh, we are with us, Vijay Lakshmi. Just one comment by Vijay Lakshmi, since it's your oration. No questions. Yeah. Uh, Dr. O.P. Yadav, as usual, he was brilliant in his presentation. We knew he was like a Damascus, a great orator. But now I can say that you can be a brand ambassador for the surgeon, cardiac surgeons. And then, sir, please don't be little, your little sister that is an intervention cardiologist. Thank you very much. Yes, madam, I wish you my command. Come, come inside. I think let's give a big hand to O.P. for his outstanding presentation and in making his point in a very forceful manner. And uh, uh, Vijay Lakshmi approached to him in a sisterly manner. We will work together, don't worry, we are with you. Whatever you can do. Okay. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. M. E. Debeki Memorial Oration for the year 2016 has been conferred on Kanlopi Yadav. Heartiest congratulations. We'd like to thank our chair.